Hi, this is Matt from Skybo. Do you want to connect your SharePoint solution with other Microsoft 365 apps? Then watch this video. So where we were working on is new actions to work closer with Microsoft Planner. So we can create plans, we can create buckets, we can create tasks, we can delete tasks, we can update them. So it's all about this that we can so previously we were always working with some task lists um, but with, this is fully separated from the the planner app so you don't have um, an all-in-one experience with the the planner app in your teams where you have all your tasks uh, that are assigned to you so it makes sense to have it also integrated into that other uh, m365 app that we can connect our application that you build with Skybo into the uh, Microsoft Planner world. That's one of the scenarios that I will show you um, afterwards in the demo. Another one is about creating Teams meetings. Um, in my scenario afterwards, I'm going to create an um, interview meeting for an employee onboarding. So, or candidates, uh, if you have candidates um, and you want to make an interview with them, you can create a Teams meeting right out of a SharePoint list, create a, a, a team meeting, invite the external person as well, um, yeah, which, who will get an invitation then. So that's one of the latest actions for Microsoft Teams. Then we, extended there were some actions to add uh, members to a team and remove them from a team but in that specific case we can now also add members to private channels and share channels because those they have separate uh, members it's not the one from the team itself so you can manage them separately and there we also have now two new actions to do that then tags that's something i would like to quickly show you because i'm pretty sure that not all of you already know what what this uh, tags about um it has been there for quite a long time but um i'll show you real quick so let's say you have um a team and normally you have members in the team like here i got a couple of members like this case, uh, these two, or also in in a that's a shared channel. I also have members here, so you have one uh, owner and two members. And by default, if you want to mention someone, then in a chat, so you make a new chat and you mention someone using an at, you have several options to mention people. Um, you can rather mention the the team itself. You can man uh, mention the channel. But then you always mention, or everyone is notified about it. But what happens if you have a large team with a lot of members and you want to mention only some uh, part of the people? Let's say you have a large team and inside you have a sales team and you have a development team um, and you only want to mention the sales team. That's exactly where you can use um, uh, tags. And the tags are actually here. There's an option. For manage text. Uh, whoops. What's wrong here? Ah, uh, here. I don't have text here. Here I should have one that I preferred. Okay. No. Hmm. Funny. Um, a tag is just a group of people. And if you create tags, you can have several tags um, uh, and add people to them. Let's see if it loads now. Manage. Hmm. Okay, for some reasons. So we can do it here. I create a tag. I call it HR admins, for example. And I only add uh, Sophie. And I'm going to add um, yeah, another person. Now I, I'm, I only have these two. I create a tag. And by this, I can, I can mention that tag at HR admins and you see this is the tag 
and it says two people. So I would only, if I write a message now, only these two people would be uh, get notified. And that's what tags are about. Not sure if everyone uh, knew about them already. Otherwise, yeah. That's um, this one here. We, we have a couple of actions to create these tags, to add people to tags, to remove people from tags, and so on. And last but not least, we have two actions added to define um, a lifecycle policy. So if you create a team, there is a possibility to say, okay, this team should be valid for, let's say, one year. After one year, the team owners should get notified that they have to check if the team is still used. Otherwise, you can delete it. Uh, and that's that's done by a policy. And these policies, we can create the policy and we can automatically, uh, or using uh, actions from Skybo, we can also add teams to that policy. So that policy will be applied to that team. So that's the, um, those are all the latest possibilities that uh, came since September last year. So back then, just historically, we had 12 actions for teams three groups, one planner action and one OneNote action. Those are basically the, the clone actions. Um, only a few for groups and yeah, the 12 teams actions. And also all these connectors, we've introduced them back then. There is no new connector. So if we look at the state uh, status from today. We have 22 teams actions, so that's a plus of 10. Uh, we'll just show all of them. Um, as we can see here, um, five new planner actions. Like I said, delete, create an update, create a plan, create a bucket, clone a plan was there before, um, and some group actions, which is about this life cycle policy. That's also part of group uh, of the group uh, graph API. Um, we can add context to mailbox. That's something quite specific, um, yeah, that's it here, more or less. And in Teams, we have quite a few more. So in total, we have added 19 new actions and it's 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 growing also uh, in the future. All right. Like I said, for the demo, I have prepared this um, on employee onboarding solution. And here I would like to show you two things. The scenario is we have candidates. It's a list of candidates and each candidate um, will go through an interview. Somewhere we have the interview and one day you're going to hire that person or not. And two things here, I'm using the create MS team meeting action to create the interview. That's why I've added this um, calendar here on the right, because we will see it's like an interview calendar. We will see all the interviews uh, there. And below, it's still empty. I created um, a planner. In this case, I created the planner manually. That's the one here. It's just a, a standard planner onboarding task. It's it's added to that site. And if you have a site which is connected to, to uh, a group, then you can have this planner web part. It's, a, it's an all of the box web part from Microsoft. You can add that to, to your page and you will see all the, the, the tasks in SharePoint. So you can see them here, you can see them in the planner or so here, or you can also see them in uh, the planner app in Teams. So that's everywhere the same. And what we are going to do in our um, case here, if we hire someone, then we can set this person to a status active. And by this, we have um, in the background, we have some task templates. That's just a, a standard list where we have all the tasks that have to be done 
if someone is getting hired and depending on uh, his or her position we get different tasks so i think i have one for project manager and if i filter by project manager here project manager we end up with three tasks and these three tasks should be added um, we have um, a completed by that is calculated that will calculate the start and the due date uh, not the start date is, is actually uh, defined on the form but that will be the due date and we can also say it should be assigned to a person a, um, a, a fixed person like here if someone needs to order a license then it's always assigned to Sophie let's say she's in, in, in IT and is responsible for ordering licenses or we have the manager of the person. So if there's no, no one set, it will be dynamic and it will be added to that um, owner or to the manager of that person. Um, so we start from here. I have two people applying for a new job. Um, first one is this project manager. And what I'm what I'm doing here is I have this button here on the top, uh, interview invitation. If I press, um, we get another form where we have to specify a couple of things for the invitation. I have to make sure to have the, the email address of the candidate. That can be any email address. It's just a text field in my case. Uh, the interview date. Some reasons it's very very slow. I don't know. Maybe it's because of screen sharing, all the clicks. Um, so I will say the the, the interview is on uh, in one week at one p.m. or two p.m. Here is the manager, and we can also see the interviewers. It's a multi people picker. I could add one or more people. Um. So I could add more people here and all those people, uh, all these people will be uh, invited. So, but that's it more or less. This is required, this is required. I can say send invitation, meeting invitation sent. So it will send the invitation in the background. And if we look at the star page, I will see the interview here. If you go to the calendar of uh, Sophie, then I see the interview here. And also Matthias, also myself, um, has been invited. So I really, I got an invitation on my email. I can show you here. Like this one. So it's a standard invitation it's a teams meeting as you can see and so it's a as you would create a meeting out of of um, teams so that's one thing i will show you afterwards um how this has been done and the second one so the system automatically sends that invitation uh, out the second one is if I go to my candidate and I will come on and I will say um, here, I'm setting another status. So I set this person to active and start the onboarding. I have another form that I will show. I have to define a start date. So let's say on May 1st. And that's my manager who will get all the other tasks that are not assigned to Sophie. And yeah, that's it. Basically, I can say set active and start the onboarding. And now the task will be added in the background 
if we close that and look at the start page, or if I would look into my planner app as well, it could take some seconds. So let's see if they are already, oh, they are already here. So we see Jason Statham, um, probation period feedback, the date is set, the person, so Edward, that's the manager. And one, uh, like we saw before, one was fixed assigned to Sophie, that's the ordering of the license. And yeah, we have a due date, which was automatically calculated. I was also setting a, a tag, but that was just um, for demo purpose. And the rest is uh, dynamically added. With this web part, you can easily um, move them around. If my, uh, here, you can also um, complete them right from here. Or, yeah, like I said, you can also do that in the planning app or in Teams. So here you see the same. So it's really your central uh, planner. And the same is here. Here. So if we look into the back end, um, I have my recruitment tracker list here. And these are all, this was done with triggered actions. I have two triggered actions. First was this interview. It's, um, the trigger is on updating. So if I go to actions. I see it's quite simple. I just have a simple uh, a condition where I check if the interview date has changed and it's not, it's not null, so it's set, then create a meeting. And this create a meeting is from here, create a meeting. And you can specify everything fully dynamic from what you know if you create a meeting uh, in Teams. So what's the title? What is the start date? I'm taking the interview date. Um, here I have hard coded at one hour. Um, it's not an all day event. The owner, and that's who will be the owner of the, the meeting, um, is the editor. I always have to specify email addresses. So you see owner's email. And the editor is just the, the standard field from SharePoint. You have the um, author and the editor. So who last edit the, the item? That's the person. Who will be the meeting owner in my scenario but as you can see you can specify someone else if you have that field in the form you can also use that one required users or optional users is just a comma separated list of email addresses and here as you can see i'm using a text expression where i'm taking the candidate email field that's this text field with my was my email inside comma and then the interviewers. Interviews is a multi people picker. And multi people pickers, we can also access the email field. If you have one person, you just get the email from one person. If you have multiple persons, it will be automatically separated uh, with a comma already. So we would have a list of comma separated email addresses, which is already fine for my scenario here. And yeah, that's it for the users. You could add a message to the body um, and some other options. Location is just hard coded and you could also make it recurring. Um, no. So that's a very simple one just to show you um, how to create that meeting um, using a trigger action. And if we look at the other one where we created these planner tasks, that's this one here. That's um, yeah, on added or updated. I was using our new scope control to put the whole thing inside. And if something would went wrong, we could send an uh, email to, I guess I was using a hard coded address, but just for, for, for demo purposes, I'm sending an email that something went wrong and we could check again and so on. So uh, it's just another scenario how you can use the new scope control. 
But in here, we also checking if the progress has changed and if it's active. And that's what we, we do when we say uh, set active and start the onboarding. We change the progress, that's the field, to active. And that's what I'm checking. You know, if you change to any other status, it will not be executed or the, it will be uh, false and it will not proceed here. So if you set it to active, I'm getting the onboarding tasks with our get item action. This one here. And then I'm looping through those onboarding tasks. We got three of them. And I'm looping over them. And I'm creating them. So if we look at this one and I'm saying planner. I was using this create a task action. This one here. And very similar here. The only things, the two things I have to specify is a group and the plan. Um, normally I could type in the group or the plan like this. So it's the name or the ID. And here, what I'm doing here is I made it fully flexible, so configurable, so to say. So I'm reading these group and plan um, IDs from a configuration list, because if I would deploy that solution somewhere else, the group and the plan might be a different one. So that's why I was creating here, actually my Firefox, which is very slow, <laughs> looks like. I have an app config list, SharePoint list, where I've specified group ID and plan ID. These two IDs, you would get from the planner in the URL. So if you go to the planner, you open up the planner, you see these two, you have the plan ID here and you have the group ID here. But those will change if you use another one. Um, that's why I was using this, this config list. To read out that config list, we have built a, uh, a new easy way. We, we um, If you open up the expression builder, we have two, three actions or functions to get these values. Um, and recently added, we have this little icon here at the bottom where we can choose a list. Okay, it's stored in the app config list and the title is group ID, check it. Okay, that's the correct one. That's the value. So I'm, I'm taking the value field and I'm using insert first value for query. That's our function to get this value back. And that's it. So I'm simply doing this and that's what I need. Uh, probably I've added it twice now. I delete the first part. That's how we get the uh, group ID or plan ID in a very simple way and fully configurable. That's just the scenario that what I did here for both of them. Then the rest is just like always uh, expressions. So I'm setting the candidate name and some title, the signed users. Here I built the logic to switch um, if there is an assigned tool in the template, then I'm taking this person. Otherwise, I'm taking the manager. That's what I'm doing here. And um, another logic in here is the due date. That's also something I'm going to calculate. So I have a, a simple switch where I check by, completed by, and depending on the, the completed by date, I'm taking the start date and add or subtract some days. So that's my custom logic. You can change that uh, for yourself. Um, yeah, that's for the due date. Start date is not set. Progress can be changed. And yeah, here you see the labels. If you have other labels, um, yeah, you can also 
see them and uh, you can also pass in checklists in planners and URLs for the attachments. Priority if needed. So that's the full, full configuration for, for a task. And it loops through all the tasks, create them, and that's it. I hope I was able to show you how you can connect other Microsoft 365 apps like Planner or Microsoft Team Meetings into your SharePoint solutions by the use of Skybo Actions.